All right, guys, let's talk about rendering skies in Twilight. So there are a couple different ways Twilight allows you to do that. So what I'm going to show you right here in, in this um, file that I have in SketchUp, I'm showing here a spherical sky. And the spherical sky, one thing that it allows you to do is it allows the sky to wrap around your whole um, object or whatever it is you're, you're uh, um, working on and it will reflect the sky onto the windows. So it's showing a little bit of reflection there. We're not seeing much because a lot of it's just green, but if it was a taller building, we would probably see some of the sky reflecting on the windows. So let me show you how we do that. So let's go over here to our SketchUp model. Here's our Twilight Render, uh, um, our dialog box here, or our, our tray, I guess. And we would go here to Environment. And environment, we have several options to choose from when we go to our background, sky, and type. Now, for the sun angle, the sun is going to be uh, using the same sun position as what you have set in SketchUp. So if I go to here to SketchUp, turn my shadows on, and it's going to use that same sun position when you go to your edit environment here. So I'm going to click back here. And so I can do several things. I can use just a plain background color for my uh, for my SketchUp model for when I render it. So let's say right now I just have it set to, to this color. Um, maybe I want to darken that just a little bit. And let's see, there it goes. And let's see what happens now if I just go to render this scene. And we'll leave it on low. Uh, we won't save that previous scene I had there. And we'll see what it does here. And here we can see that I can change the brightness of it. Uh, it gives me a few options to change the uh, haziness, uh, the sun strength, so we can cast a harsher shadow. And here we go. I think it's uh, it's working right there. Okay, so there's the change with just a background color. Um, again, I can modify this. So let's say if I go over here, let's brighten it up. And let's see if we can also change this. Let's go to like 1.5. And here, let's change the sun strength. Let's go to uh, 8. And see there, we can see it, it changed kind of the shadow effects here. So let's see what happens now if we go to render this. And let's go to render. We won't save that previous one. Okay, we'll just give it a second. And there we can see where it's processing down here. Uh, it's going fairly quickly. I just have it on this low plus setting. One thing you want to keep in mind, you can always change the size of your image over here. And okay, there we go. So brighten it up a little bit more. Let's go ahead and dock this in the side here. Okay, so there's a lot brighter. Um, not too bad. It just depends on the look you're going for. Now that is just the background color image. So here we have the a few other ones let's say if you have an image that you found somewhere so if I go to here I want to select a certain image that I want to use for my background let's say we want to use this uh, beach scene here there, there it's showing what's going on uh, it looks a little bright so let's let's turn that down let's go back to one and let's see what it does I didn't notice much of a difference let's go to point 75 so very subtle differences, 0.5. Let's go to 0 0.05, see what happens. So it's really not showing too much of a change there. I'm not sure if it did anything actually, but it should. And uh, maybe we change the sun strength. Let's go back to five on that. And there it darkened the, the shadows a bit. So let's see what happens now if I go to here and render this scene. And we won't save it and we'll just give it a second it's going to load the geometry and process that and just give it a few seconds and it'll show us what that's going to look like again this is a background centered image so the bad thing about using these is there's no reflection shown on these windows because it's in the background there's nothing in the foreground so that's why i prefer using the um the spherical sky. Now, this would be better for if you're 
doing an interior shot and you're looking outside the window, you're not really worried about the foreground, just the background. So this would be a good scenario to, to just have uh, a background centered image. Then it gives you a couple different options. You can tile the image if you wanted. But let's say if it was a small image um, and fit image. So now it's going to fit it in the scene. So whatever scene is going to try to fit that whole image in there, which could be good or bad. Um, let's see what happens if we do that. And we won't save the changes. Yeah, we'll just give it a second. And this is background fit image. Let's see if it changes it. Yeah, so there it just kind of you know squishes it all in there. Um, so might might could work in some situations, maybe not. But let's go over here. So we have again sky color, uh, another one. So let's go to let's change the the brightness of it. So it's quite a bit bright. It's a little bit much. Let's just go to one. Okay, so that looks about right. Maybe we can change just the color here. And again, I can I can leave this how I want. You know, I can make the the shadows a little little bit uh, harder if I want a little to give the sun a little bit more strength and there you see what it do it kind of brightens the white where the sun is hitting and we'll go ahead and see what this looks like and there it's processing doing a ray tracing and uh, Twilight Render really is a good program. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is that you can't do real-time uh, comparison. So everything you have to render it and wait to see if it's how you like. But the quality quality of renders that you get from Twilight is actually really good. And for a free program, it's really a good choice. If you just need something to qu create some quick scenes, not too bad at all. Um, okay, so there we have that. Now, now let's go to the one that I like to use the most, which is the spherical sky. Uh, hemispherical sky is, is another one. Um, again, some of these, it's just um, the, the trick is finding images that match this, this uh, the setting of, of a hemispherical sky, which they're hard to find. Even the spherical sky ones are hard to find. And for that reason, I'm actually putting a link at the uh, under the description part of this uh this uh, YouTube video so that you can download the spherical skies that I'm using the ones that I know that work with Twilight so they really are kinda hard to find and some of these are provided by uh, Twilight themselves and I try to find them again they're kinda hard to find so feel free to download these for your use um, so here we go okay so so there's a spherical sky and that's how one way you can tell that it's working is you see that horizon line and we also see that it's reflecting back on here as well so let's brighten it up a little bit I want that sky to look a little brighter let's go to uh, 1.5 let's see if it brightens it up uh, that might be a little bit too much let's go 1.25 and we'll we'll start there let's just see what happens we go to render this we'll give it a second all right it's processing and we should see that horizon line yep right there we see the horizon line we see the clouds uh, another thing we could do is let's say if we know there's something else in this image that we want to see we can actually rotate the spherical sky so let's say if I wanted to rotate it uh, 180 degrees so there it kind of just moves a little bit you couldn't really tell the difference but there is so let's say zero and I didn't see much of a change but let's say 45 there we go so now we see it moved a little bit so now we'll see this uh, background change just slightly so let's go ahead and render it again and see what that does and I'm gonna do one more where I get really close to this window so you can kinda of see the reflections that, that are happening
Let's give that a second. All right, so yeah, there we see the, the clouds, the positioning changed because we rotated our sky here. So let's do another scene where we kind of get a little closer up to these windows and maybe we can see some of that reflection that's happening. So maybe get about there. And we'll go ahead, let's go to two point perspective, get that straightened out. And all right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna leave those settings the same. And we're just gonna go ahead and render this scene. And we'll see if we can see some reflections of that sky in this these windows. All right. There we go. All right, so there we see, we do see some stuff happening there. Um, I guess because of the angle, this house is kind of elevated up a bit. If you can see what I did here, um, it's kind of elevated above. So the angle is a little awkward, but you can see that there is, or is, it is reflecting the grass and a little bit of that horizon line there. I think I have some, some trees back here that it's reflecting. So not bad that that's, the spherical sky is one that kind of is probably the, the best one to use if you're doing exterior renderings. You probably want to use a spherical sky if you're looking at something with reflections and stuff like that. So that's pretty much it. That's how you deal with your sky settings in Twilight. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, um, share it, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to this channel, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.